Sell me your tired, your poor, your shattered silks and torn dresses yearning to not be thrown away. The wretched refuse of your teeming attics and closets, send these, the pit stained, the split seamed. I'll wait beside my mailbox for your priority package. This is weird. <laughs> So today's piece is the worst out of my, my entire collection. It is in the worst condition of any piece that I own. Um, but before we get to that, let's do a little uh, fashion history. It seems like from the 1790s forward, fashion changed rapidly. The 1890s are another transitional period. Though women were still wearing corsets, the fashion had changed so the need for skirt supports like cage crinolines and bustles were fading away. Padding and petticoats still helped create the illusion of the fashionable silhouette of a narrow waist. And yes, Anne girl, this was the time of puffed sleeves, often called leg of mutton sleeves, or jigao, or jigget sleeves, they required some support to keep that balloon shape. Skirts were A-lined and flowed smoothly over the waist, and by 1895 the puffed sleeves had reached their apex and began to reduce again. piece we're going to look at today, it's a late 1890s bodice, as you can see by its definite lack of puffs. This bodice is pretty small. Um, I line everything up properly. It's about a 24 inch waist, maybe 25. Um, the bust is a little bit harder because it's so delicate. I am very careful about pulling it to see um, exactly what size it is, but it's probably about um, 32, 32, 34, something like that. So what we have here is this blue um, iCat uh, woven but with a plaid, um, which we actually saw something similar last week, except this iCat doesn't really seem to have, it doesn't really make a picture as much as it just is part of the, an abstract part of the design, but it's really lovely. And it's on a deep uh, blue background with green, like olive green, white, and black, white and black pinstripe running through it. Really, really gorgeous. Um, it has some really interesting details like these buttons here. Um, oh gosh, I love it so much. And it's got this little bow detail that's a little bit um, asymmetrical. So it closes down the center front, but the bow is just right off to the side and it's even angled. Um, so that it uh, just sits properly, lines up with these uh, pleats here at the waistband. Um, it closes with oh geez, no, uh, hook and eye closures, and this is one where the silk closes, but then also we have the lining that closes. So you would close the lining and then close the fashion layer over top. Um, we have pleats here at the waist, one, two, three, four, five, which are really interesting. And then just because of how they've used the fabric um, with these stripes coming up, it just kind of looks like a ribbon trim detail, but, it, but it's not. One of my favorite little um, details of this piece is on the sleeve here which this is completely splitting. Um, but this cording that's been stitched uh, and is a trim detail. And then so we have, like uh, here as well on the bodice, we have a section of the fabric that's been taken and cut and, and applied. And then we have these buttons. Now on this sleeve, this, this circle is coming off, so there's a the cord has been wrapped around the circle, it fits over the button, and then they're linked together, so it's like a faux frog kind of thing, which we also have at the closure and on the front. So it's a little bit of a military type detail. 
And then we have this like cotton that just doesn't seem to belong here and this lovely little lace detail at the neckline to bring the neckline up a little bit more. So the sleeves you can see are not quite puffed, but they do have that like room here and they are a shaped sleeve. Okay, so we have polished cotton. All of the edges are pinked and we've got like some pretty big seam allowances on this lining, which is um, interesting, but they're kind of like all different. <laughs> um, we have boning here and in several places to, because it would fit very tightly, or not tightly, but snugly around the waist. It'd be very fitted around the waist. And so these bones keep it from rolling or uh, wrinkling when you sit down or when you move. Um, it does have two hooks in the back that would attach to the skirt to kind of keep, to keep everything um, held together. So it would look more like a dress than say separates, even if it was um, separates. Um, cannot see, like the only thing that's not deteriorating is apparently the inside where I kind of want to see things. Um, but we've got, so I don't know what boning is in here. Um, but we have these, I don't know, you guys know I'm like obsessed with pit stains, right? And it's a weird thing to say, like I can't believe I just said that. But in here we have these um, OMO, the registered trademark from the 18, well this, well I'll, I'll show you some advertisements that I found. Um, but these are um, perspiration guards, uh, no rubber, odorless, wash and tepid water using soap and a little ammonia hang in a cool dry place do, to dry, do not iron. And you can feel that there is stuff in there. Um, I'm not quite sure what the stuff is, but it's in there. Hoop, a loop here at the, uh, the sleeve seam, but not one on this side. And instead of last week's um, guards being a uh, safety pin in place, these are stitched, like they're just tacked right in. Um, you can see some top stitching from, oh golly, from this collar section. Oh, that's silk. Okay, I was feeling the wrong thing. So there's silk behind this lace. It's an ivory silk. It's almost the same color. It may not have been, but it's the same color as the lining. So I was like feeling the lining, and I'm like, it's just some cotton back there. It's not. Um, yeah, so that was just kind of stitched in, like really quickly, it looks like. Um, this thing is in such bad shape, but I will kind of pad her out a little bit so that you can um, see how she would look on a body. Now this is the weirdest looking thing ever. I used it last time. Ooh, okay. So she's, I mean, she's got a tiny little waist. I mean, maybe to some of you, like, that's not a tiny waist, but to me, that is a tiny waist. And so she would be kind of filled out like that. Um, I think we can manage to turn her over to look at the back, but I don't think there's anything too exciting going on there. So we'll check that out. But yeah, that's, that's how she would have looked. You know, we have these gathers right here in the back where we added this like waistband. Let's add these little buttons here. It's just a touch that just makes it special. Um, so one weird thing that I just noticed is hooks on the, on the back of the neck here. So there was an attachment. Um, something could go, there was another element that could go on there. And this thing is just tacked on as well. I mean, we saw the stitches inside and some of those are coming out, but it's pretty loosely sewn on. Okay, so one piece across the back. The sleeves are two piece. So there's a front and a back to the sleeve. Um, 
And then it appears that they just turned it under. Yeah, so let me, I feel like I'm bending her arm behind her back. Um, she's not a person. Um, so they just turned the silk under, folded the raw edge under, turned it inside the lining, and whip stitched it down. Now here, Well, we have a little underarm section here that runs from the armpit down. Um, seam in the front. So we have two large pieces in the front, two center pieces, one piece in the back. Now, that is excluding all the decorative elements. I wish it wasn't falling apart. <laughs> like, the pink dress, like, I can deal. Like, that's falling apart, and I'm like, okay with that. This one, I am not okay with it. I want it to be good. I want it to be forever. Just because it's so lovely. Like, the pink dress has, like, some weird stuff going on. Like, I'm not even sure that it's pretty. <laughs> this is pretty. This is beautiful, and I love it. And I want it to live. I don't know. I'm like, and this could be one of those projects, like the 1860s gown, where I could be like, oh, I make it, but it just feels like it wouldn't be the same, because so much of the design of this garment is the fabric. Move it, Beatrice, this is my job. The OMO Manufacturing Company was initially founded in 1893 in Middletown, in Middletown, Connecticut, as the Middletown Rubber Works Company. The company changed hands several times, and one of, during one of those transactions, this one I think in the 19 teens, um, a newspaper article pointed out that the majority of the company's 150 to 200 workers were mostly women and girls, and that they were well paid, wages comparable to men employed in other factories throughout Middletown. So way to go, OMO. Now the company was in business until the 1960s, making things like sheets for hospitals and such. The interesting thing is that they were called the rubber works and they made rubber sheets, but these dress shields were rubberless. That seems a little... I've always been a little afraid of 19th century sewing. So we seem more compl complex and fussy than 18th century sewing where I feel most comfortable. This bodice has changed my mind a little. I've been able to see that the shapes are kind of simple and that interest and detail are added by manipulating fabric and adding decoration. Oh, you mean pleats and <laughs> applied fabric? That's very sim similar to the 18th century. And so this year, <clears throat> well later this year, I have plans to get in a little deeper to the 19th century, so into 19th century sewing a little more. Anyway, join me next time, um, and you can follow along the process uh, that I'm, I take, use uh, to make an 18th century wool gown from drafting pattern to uh, hand sewing <clears throat> and making this gown in an effort to not set myself while uh, I'm cooking at the hearth at work. I've been tempting fate in a linen dress, so we're gonna do a wool. Um, if you enjoyed these videos, if you've learned something, um, hit that subscribe button. It only takes a second, or don't, but come back, alright? Um, if you have any comments or questions, please leave them below, and hopefully we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.